Hello everybody, my name is Rishi and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be explaining ancient Egypt, the civilization, to you. So, in ancient Egypt was one of the most advanced civilizations ever. Like, not ever, in the ancient world. And it stayed around for 3000 years. And they left behind many marks. For example, their great pyramids and then their religious texts. So, so the rulers of ancient Egypt were kings called pharaohs. But they, and the pharaohs were supposed to be children of gods. But other than that, they also had priests, governors, mayors, soldiers and peasants. And they also had a very creative way of writing. Oh, but here's the thing though, they were very religious. Their life was full of ritual. They worshipped hundreds of gods and goddesses. And the pharaohs and priests uh, just performed complex rituals to ensure good crops, keep away disease and bring success in war. And they also made massive tombs for their dead and stuffed them with gold and treasure. Gold. And so here's the thing. Now you may be wondering, how did they write? Because I said they had a very creative way of writing. Well, they wrote in pictures. They used to write in pictures using... Uh, the pictures were called he uh, hieroglyphs. And each picture could symbol or a picture could represent a word, a sound or an action. Instead of paper, the Egyptians used flattened sheets of a type of reed called papyrus. Inscriptions could also be pressed into clay or painted on pottery or carved into stone. And they had an ancient god named Thoth, which you'll be uh, you'll see in this picture on the screen right now. He is the god uh, who is uh, on the bottom right, uh, uh, second to the bottom of right because the bottom right is the dog. So the one in front of the dog is the you know thought and uh, he was the god of wisdom and uh, writing was a f uh, they believed that writing was a blessing from thought and also the famous names of some sort of important fingers as kings or queens were written inside an oval shape and that was a symbol of eternal life and let me tell you something they were obsessed with death and what i mean by that is well not death exactly they were obsessed with the afterlife and uh see what happened is that they believed that the soul of the dead person undertook a journey to another world after death and this and after death the soul wandered into the underworld until it could be judged by the gods and so the god anubis would weigh their hearts and to measure their worth Good people were rewarded with a happy afterlife, while bad people were devoured by Amit, the fearsome beast uh, with the head of a crocodile, chest of a lion, and the torso of a hippopotamus. This is the one, the, the thing that I call it, dog, which was behind the god Thoth. He's right there. And I like, to, I like to call him dog, because he looks like a dog. Like, what are you going to call him? Like, croco, hippo? Man, what are, you, like, what are you going to call him? There's not even dog for him or whatever. Anyway, so when... Uh, by the way, the, the Anubis is the one with the jackal head. Uh, he's sitting down. Anyway, so first of all... So how, how did they measure the worth? They measured it using something called the scales of judgment. The scales of judgment... You'll see that around Anubis, there is some sort of thing. Like, in front of him, there's this rod, and the rod is connecting to stuff. So, on the left side of the weighing scale, of the scale of judgment, there is the soul's heart. But on the other side, it is, there, there is the feather, of, oh my god. There is the feather of, uh, where my god, I forgot. The feather of... The feather. Boom, boom, boom. 
Oh, yeah, the feather of truth. God. Okay, yeah. Anyway, if the heart was heavier than the feather of truth, then uh, they were supposed to be bad people. While if the feather was heavier or it was equal, they were supposed to be good people. And the God, wi- or the God of Wisdom thought he, mes- he recorded the things. Like, so if this, he would record the name, then right if they, he was devoured by Amit or they, had to, they lived a happy afterlife. Now you may see a bunch of weird-headed people sitting above them. Those aren't people at all. Those are gods and they were witnesses. Let's say that the person being judged was a good. They would also have to go to the gods on top and uh, swear they had not sinned in any way. And that is about the afterlife, basically. But where did they live? Where did they live? That's the question. So, they lived in kingdoms. This is siege. Anyway, they are, uh, they are actually are two kingdoms. You know, under the pharaohs. The lower kingdom was the lands around the mouth of Nile. The farmlands along the Nile banks further upstream were the upper kingdom. They were unified in around 3000 BCE. Ancient Egypt went through three periods of strength. The old kingdom, the middle kingdom and the new kingdom. In between wars and disasters, crop failures left the country weakened. But let's start. There is something called Abu Simbel. I have no idea how to pronounce any of these. So I'm just assuming it's so which gonna assume it's Abu Simbel. And these temples were built by the king Remesses in uh, Remesses II the second in about uh, twelve uh, one th- <laughs> uh, twelve thousand sixty BCE to impress his neighbors, the Nubians. See, I have no idea to pronounce these names. But why would you build temples to impress your neighbors? Anyway, the statues of uh, the statues of the pharaoh and his queen guard the entrance. So basically, what that means is that in front there are, there is a statue of the queen and the pharaoh. But the uh, Egyptians are most known for their pyramids, and the Great Pyramid uh, was built uh, with stone by the Pharaoh Khufu of the Old Kingdom. Three burial chambers are hidden inside. It was finished in 25, uh, 2560 BCE. Not exactly that, but around the same time. And there is also the Sphinx. The, it, this is a huge statue that has the body of a lion and the head of a human. It was probably built around 2550 BCE. But the story is quite a mystery. So, yeah. <laughs> but there's also another thing called the Valley of the Kings. In the time of the New Kingdom, kings were often buried underground instead of in pyramids. Their valley houses the many of their tombs. So, yeah. And so we just learned that they lived near Nile. And so here's about their life on the Nile. The Egypt is surrounded by deserts, so the ancient kingdom depended entirely on the river Nile, which they lived around. Each entire, every other river flooded, submerging the farmland along its banks. Rivers washed in rich soil down from the highlands to the south. The Egyptian built ditches and low walls to trap the mud and water in the fields along each side of the river, giving them fertile soil in which to grow crops as well as wheat, as such as wheat, barley, grapes, and vegetables. The whole kingdom depended on the floods. In a drier, many people would starve. So here's the thing: how it worked. So in April, it was called Shomu, harvest season. And the farmers used sickles to harvest the grain. Oxen trampled on the stalks to separate the edible parts. And then, and this was around spring. Then, near summer came June, Akhet, flood season. 
and the Nile flooded, submerging the farmlands around its banks. Farm, farmers trapped the flood water in the walls and ditches. Then uh, it went to autumn, and nearing winter, it came November, period, the planting season. Again, I don't know how to pronounce these things properly, so please do not judge me. Anyway, November, period, planting season. The waters retreat, and farmers plant their crops in a fertile river mud the floods have left behind. And then, uh, uh, right after winter, before spring, comes the growing season. During the growing season, the farmers are busy removing their weeds and scaring off pests. Because, you know, it's growing. Now, what about some gods? What about the gods and goddesses? So, the, it, as we already said, the Egyptians worshipped a large number of gods, and often in the form of animals and natural forces. The greatest god was Ra, the sun god, who created the universe. And then cow-headed cow Hathor was the goddess of motherhood. The god of wisdom, Thoth, as you can see over here, had the head of an ib- ibis, while Sobek, the god of the Nile, was shown as a crocodile. The river goddess Nut, Nut arched her body over the earth to form the sky. Hey guys, do you think the last name was Nut was Case and her name would be Nutcase? Hmm, maybe. Anyway, the symbols of Ra, the, you know, the greatest god, the sun god stuff. So, the symbol of Ra was the god Ra journeying across the sky as the sun. And there was a disc on his head which, pro- which produ- produ- uh, produced light. And he stood on the bow that sails across the sky from morning until night. Now, but what about the afterlife? Like, we, uh, we learn about the afterlife, but what about the process of the afterlife? Uh, well, the Egyptians were obsessed with being dead. So, yeah. Uh, but here's the thing the, uh, about the pharaohs is a fun fact. Uh, they were still, they were supposed to be children of the gods, right, or just gods, and so they were. Their responsibility was to make sure that the river Nile flooded, because without the flood, like the crops would grow, and in case of a drought, the pharaoh would have to ask for the help of the gods to help him please the people. But and if it, and things did not improve, he would be blamed, which was bad. Anyway, important people like pharaohs were uh, mummified to preserve the bodies in the afterlife because the ancient Egyptians believed that if the body was rotten or damaged, uh, the, they would suffer in the underworld. So here's how uh, they mummified. First, they removed all the organs, including the brain. I know, it's weird, right? But before they did that, they washed the body in wine. And uh, the, the only organ they left in was the heart. So that was really creepy. The reason they didn't take out the heart was because they believed that the heart was the home of the soul. Anyway, next, they packed the hollowed body with bags of natron, which was a natural salt that drew water out of the flesh. It was kept inside the body for 40 days. Then they removed it and uh, washed it in wine to remove the salt. Then they packed it with sawdust and resin coke la- linen. The skin was rubbed with oils and perfumes and often painted with resin for extra protection. Then they wrapped the mummy in layers of bandages, amulets, which is pieces of jewelry with magical powers, which um, were included to keep the spirit safe on the journey to the next world. The finishing touch was a decorated mask. The mummy was placed into the coffin, which was painted or carved with likeness of a dead person. The mummies of the rich people were enclosed in several coffins, which in turn sat in wooden shrines. And then, the last bit. Exactly 70 days of the death. 70 days, 70 days. The mummies were laid to rest. The procession would carry the coffin and burial go to the tomb, often sealing them away so that robbers could not break in. Uh, so here, and here's a fun fact. Did you know that uh, most of the tombs in the Valley of the Kings had been painted, uh, had, 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 had painted walls. But in Tutankhamun's tomb, you know, that famous fellow, 
But on common stone, only the burial room was painted, which suggested that it was made in a hurry. Which makes sense, actually. Anyway, speaking of Tutankhamun, let's talk about Tutankhamun's tomb. Tutankhamun became a pharaoh at the age of nine, and then he died suddenly, just nine years later, in 1327 BCE. He was buried in an underground tomb in the Valley of the Kings on the west bank of, on the west bank of the River Nile. Although grave robbers stole some of his burial treasure, thousands of precious artifacts lay undisturbed for more than 3,000 years before archae- arche- uh, archaeologists rediscovered the tomb in 1922. So yeah, but let's talk about the structure of a tomb. So the first off was the entrance hall, and this was a short entrance corridor sloped downwards in the tomb. Then, then there were four full-sized chariots, and then rock-cut walls. The walls were bare rock, chiseled into a smooth finish. Then there were gold-covered crouches with animal heads. Then there was the annexe. The room was filled with containers of luxurious foods and egg expensive wines and oils then uh, then there were bales of cloth these were rich fabrics that would provide clothes for the dead king in the afterlife and but now for and then came a room with the mummy shrine and the tomb was encased in four shrines of gold painted world and so here are the layers First was the inner, uh, uh, what is that called? The inner coffin, which was made of solid gold. And then there was another layer, that was of this wood. And then, and then there was another, just like the gold one, but that was wood, just painted gold. And those were the four layers. Also, there were wall paintings. And the wall of the burial chambers was decorated, de- uh, depicting scenes of the afterlife. And there was also the other room near it, and that was the treasury. And the room contained most of the king's most valuable treasures. And for example, model boats. These models were believed to grow full size in the afterlife. And companion mummies, mummies. two smaller mummies were found there, thought to be the children of the king who, who died when they were young. And then, uh, remember how I said that they remove organs? They also store those organs. Yeah. Uh, that, that's weird. There was a shrine for organs. And the, the, there were jars containing the king's organs where they enclosed, enclosed in a wooden shrine covered in gold. And there was also the Anubis statue. The jackal represents Anubis, god of embalming, who would guide the king in the afterlife. And that is pretty much it about pharaohs and ancient Egypt, like the basics, I mean. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because this took me so long to make. Anyway, bye, have a nice, have a nice day.